We're going to do a different species today. Yesterday we did the sky lupin, which has red, larger leaves than the one that we're going to do today, and more flowers. So this will give us more time to concentrate on getting each of the flowers done and each of the leaves done. It's a miniature lupin that looks a lot like the sky lupin. Okay, smaller flowers, smaller leaves, the leaves are narrower. So the first thing I'm going to do is plan this drawing. And so I need to get head of the flowers. The other thing about being here is that we're so much closer to the airport. <laughs> a lot more people, a lot more aircraft. And so I have two photographs that I'm using as reference. Neither of them is a great composition, but we can make up our own composition. We'll use these leaves, create a nice composition of leaves, and then we'll put this head of flowers on top of the plant. So it's a bit of a combination and a, and a switching around of what goes where, and that's what an artist can do. You're not just trying to copy, you're trying to perfect what is out there, or at least give you an ideal form. So have fun, plan it first, and then you can do the... So I want to have the stem down the middle, a little bit of a curve to it, so it's going to have a nice, pretty shape, okay? You can actually have that stem come in like an S shape, like that. And that's even prettier in some ways. But anyhow, we want to have a diagonal. That's prettier than having it straight. So, on top of there, I want to have good space, so I leave a little space at the top. Have my flowers up here like this fitting about that much of the space, so that I have enough room down here to then play around with the leaves. Yesterday we had a larger leaf in this space down here, and I think that looks pretty. Okay, so we'll put a larger leaf down here, and then what we'll do is we'll put a smaller leaf at a different angle over here, and now we have to figure out where is this third leaf going to go? Do we need a third leaf? Can it go down here? Smaller leaf, or should it be, you know, up up here or over here. That's the sort of thing you choose for yourself. I'll just choose one. I don't think there's anything that can go wrong. I like this space here best, so you have this sort of neat shape of four spaces. Ignore these two here. And we'll just work with this sort of design, okay? Now, which direction is the leaf going in? The leaves of these pea plants, these lupins, our uh, palmate. So it's like a hand with seven fingers, not five. Okay, and so we want to figure out which direction the leaf is going to go in that's prettiest, and maybe we want to have this one where the central leaf is going that direction, and that's going to determine everything else. My guidelines would be to start at an angle like this, almost horizontal like that, there, and there. So I'll have a leaf here, a leaf here, like that. These will be smaller in the back. That'll be where the stem comes in, so there won't be a leaf there. There's seven of them, so now we have seven spaces left. There's the leaf. Okay, so this is how I'm going to plant it. This leaf here, I want it to be on an angle where it's sort of side on to us. It's more of an oval than a circle. So I'm going to create a little more of a depth, a plane going away from us. And so I'm going to tilt that back, and I'm going to put the center of the leaf somewhere back here like this. So now I'll have the leaf going in this direction, upwards a little bit more. And I'm going to then put my cross somewhere there, and there will be the other leaves. Now I'll fill that in. These miniature lupins have very narrow leaflets like that, and the stem is going to come down. The petiole will come down to meet the stem of the plant there. So I'm planning it all out, and this one will go this way. Again, the center is going to be a little off-center towards the back this time, and this will set up my directionality. It's going, uh, tilting this way, okay, and coming down towards us. So these are the leaves here, first leaf, the stem coming down to the plant in the back there, and so forth. 
Now, the flowers. I want to have an attractive arrangement of flowers. So what do I do? I want to have the largest ones at the bottom, down here. There's three down here in this. These are all flowers, but we can make them rejuvenate them. Three around this, the, the curve at the base of the um, group. Here's the circle. And then maybe two up here. And then I'll put this little um, bud at the top. There's a bud there, but it's a very wimpy looking little bud, so I want to make that pretty. That's my plan. And so I want to have one big one here, a big flower, another flower here. These are all big flowers, but staying within the circle. You don't want to go outside your design. And then a couple large flowers here and the bud at the top. So there's my design. And now make them more like a lupin where you have the keel and then you have on top of that the standard or the banner of the flower and keel going off this way the standard coming up, and you can see the back of the standard on this one. So we're gonna have the standard curling away from us like this, curling in, and then there's the keel of the flower there. We can erase all of these other guidelines, okay? And this one here coming towards us, I'm using these flowers as my guide. This one coming towards us, I can see down on top of the standard. So the standard is sort of like this at the top, curling in, towards us like that. And then the keel is coming out there like that, and you can see down the center of the keel like that. This one up on top is one of the prettier ones, so we want to make sure it's a nice big flower. The standard is rather large. Well, well formed. Sorry about that. Tighten that down. Everything's falling down today. Okay. But it's clear. The picture's clear. Fantastic. <laughs> Sorry about yesterday. We're doing our best to make sure you have a nice full view, nice dark lines, and then I'm going to switch to drawing with pencils and redraw the whole thing. But I want you to see how I go about the process. It's a very messy process when I'm doing the guidelines, but then I, I can do it in, in color pencils. So why, why don't we just get started on that? Um, this is going to just be uh, a, the same process, just repeated, so I don't want to make it too boring. All right, now I've got my design, I can put that aside, put that over here on another easel, clip it on so it doesn't blow away in the wind as the wind picks up. All right, now I'm going to start by drawing the flowers in blue and the leaves in green, but I'm going to keep it pretty light, and you tell me if it's too, <laughs> too light. I don't want this to be too distracting when I've got the drawing done. So again, my drawing needs to fit, so I'm going to have some good space. I want my leaves down here, so I'm going to fit my leaves in. I don't know if you can see that at all. I can Not too much. That. Okay, so I'm going to go with a slightly darker green, and I'm just going to go put a... I think that's where I want to have my first leaf, okay? It's going to be hard for me to do my background or to erase this in the future, but that's, that's all right. You, you can erase yours, so that's what mine is. All right, then the other leaf is going to be there, going in that direction, side on the side so we have a bit of a tilt into space. This one over here is going to be opposing that, so maybe that's a little bit too obvious, but it still looks good and it's smaller, so that, that's a matter. So just put that there. That's a fairly interesting group of different ovals, okay? And then I'm going to put the flowers up above that, and that circle is going to be larger and probably fill this area here. Can you see that? I can. Haha! <laughs> you viewers, let us know if you can see the uh, see the, just the light pencil work. Especially, he's done. let me know if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to curve this. It's going to be the stem, and I'm using a purple, so you should see that, because the stem on this plant is quite purple. Starting at the top here, where the bud's going to be, the bud's going to be up there, and the stem's going to come down, and maybe I'm going to try to curve it like that. Can you see that? Looks good. Okay. Great. All right, so that purple is a perfect color. I'm going to carry the stem from this leaf going up there, stem from this leaf going up here, stem from this leaf going in there, and those will go down the center of each of these leaves. 
Okay, now my flowers. I can probably stick with the purple. I'm going to try to put my flowers in to fit this um, oval. I can actually carry them outside the oval a little bit. I have lots of space to play with. So I'm going to put the first one is going to be down here. I'm going to put the keel and the wings down there and then the standard is going to be overlapping the stem a little bit. Coming up. So in researching this flower we, we, we looked up you know what the root of the name is and of course lupin is from the word wolf and we're not quite sure why it was named after the wolf but one of the readings that I did last night said that it had to do with the fact that the Romans believed that the soil that they planted lupins in was ruined by the lupins taking all the nutrients out of the soil of course it's the opposite of that Lupins actually add nitrogen to the soil and fertilize the soil. So there's that second flower. That might be even a little too small. I can make it a little bigger. Make that. I think that's better. More flower. <laughs> okay, and then over here I'm going to have another stem a little bit off. So they're not completely lined up. They're a little off. Um, Here we have the sepal, and then we have the keel, and the standard is going up like this. Now we have the three big flowers. We have room here for the two other flowers, and I'm going to fill this space with one, and I'll put another one over here. So the keel is going to be down here, and then we'll have the standard come up and overlap this bud just a little bit like that can't see the stem the other one you can see the stem coming out off to the right there's the calyx and then there's the standard coming back in Are you able to get any feedback from anybody that might be watching? Yes, uh, everyone's just saying thanks for doing this again. Thanks for redoing. Amazing work. Love how easy he's making this. Good morning. Thanks for doing this again. I hear you and I hear him. Huh? <laughs> so we're live. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. Okay, I'm going to go switch to a redder color for the buds. I want to actually lift the buds up above the flower a little bit because I think it's interfered with. So I'm going to bring the stem up a bit. Bring the bud up here. It's too close to the top, but not too, too close. And then I'm going to uh, put these little sheathed bracts on the side here. Marilyn says, I can see lines. Thanks for bold lines. Well, Marilyn gave me beans yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> After that failure. So, Marilyn, I'm doing all of this for you, love. <laughs> we also moved to the shade, which, which helps a lot. It's not as uh, blown out by the, by the bright sun. All right. And now I can actually bring the lines of the stem down. Quite nice, thick stem. And if you could see the photograph of these miniature lupins, Remember, these are miniature lupins, even though they're so big on my truck. <laughs> they're teeny tiny little flowers. <laughs> and they're very low to the ground, but they're very common here. Very pretty, and an important um, nectar source for small insects and food source for caterpillars. Okay, so there's the stem. All of these stems have quite a bit of red in them, sort of a purplish red. It's quite pretty, so we'll get to coloring that later. This stem comes in the back here to the calyx where you have the sepals. Okay. And then on the leaves, the stem's a little red, so I'll just do that. Okay, the base of the flowers, there's a little bit of that brack left on the underside of some of those flowers. So I'll just add some of that red coming down from the sepals. Like that. 
Okay. Now I can switch to the leaves. We've got the flowers worked in. We're going to work in all of the detail on the leaves. And they're quite simple. They're very narrow leaf. They are palmate. You saw the pattern when we did the pre-sketch. Um, so I'm just going to use the same. Well, actually, I want a, a different. No, that's a good green. Sort of a muddy green. That's not a sage green. I want this leaf to have a little more angle to it. So I'm going to carry this center of the leaf up a little further away. So more of the, the leaves that are close to us, we're going to see more of those leaves, less of the leaves going away from us. They're going to be foreshortened as they go away from us. So this center leaf is going to go in this direction. Then these leaves here are going to come towards us like that. So something like that. And then I'll have to just make sure I got the spacing right. These are four shortened, and then I can put that one in the middle. Something like that. Can you see that? I can see it. All right, so that's one, two, three, four. I need three more, so I'm going to put one here and one in here. Pump. There's my leaf, okay? You've got to do these guidelines. It really makes it easier for you. In the end, you're going to have a more interesting, more exact drawing as well but you you sort of work it out you work out the approximations and until you get it right and you adjust all right so this one's going away from me I think I'll do it like that going away from me and maybe I have it too close to the stem so I'm gonna bring this leaf out a little further something like that maybe a little more on a plane like this so it's leaning away it's not a perfect circle it's foreshortened this way, going away from me. And then this leaf here will be centered there, there, there. So there's the stem. This is the first leaf. This is the second leaf. And then all the others. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Something like that. And then this one here is a little bigger, which is nice. And it's going off and away, so this is going away from, well, actually, maybe we could have it coming towards us. I think towards us might be better, so I'm just going to shift the center down a little bit and make, make it come down more like this. Like that. Karen says, thanks for showing how to foreshorten the petals. Very helpful. And she's watching from Oregon. Oh, hi, Karen. <laughs> she's an artist. <laughs> she does the most gorgeous gourds. Oh. <laughs> and now she knows how to foreshorten leaves, or petals, I should say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. And then uh, Trammy, I think that's how I pronounce your name. She said she's sharing on Chopsticks Alley Art. Thank you. That's oh. awesome. Thanks for sharing. Oh. I don't think I know Trammy. Chopsticks Alley Art. I like the name. Me too. All right, so I'm going to tone down some of my guidelines that I don't want anymore. And I'll go over that, make the color background. So yesterday's drawing, I actually tidied it up a bit on um, at home last night. That's what I came up with. Can you see that? Yes, very okay. clear. So I use a yellow in the background. I think I'll use that again today. The leaves yesterday were larger than what we're using today, but we'll use the same sort of color scheme. There was more red in these uh, flowers than the ones that we're doing today, but that's okay. They have their own beauty. All right, so let's color the leaves sort of at a base yellow green so that we have our lightest color first. Fill that whole thing in with a light yellow green. That's sort of the base color of each of these leaves. So there's my leaflet, seven leaflets on this palmate leaf. I'll try to stay in the lines. Distracted <laughs> <laughs> by the birds. A little sparrow, I think. Okay. And Andrea says, the leaves are my favorite part. Maybe me too. I love the leaves of lupins. 
I love everything about a lupin. <laughs> I want to eat a lupin. <laughs> <laughs> so we read that they are edible, but you have to um, leach the alkaloids out of the, the lupins. Here's the stem. I'm going to add the, the light colors, as I said, and at the base, the stems are green, and it's a light green at the base. But it's got a lot of red in it, and in some cases it's going to have shadow greens, which are darker blue greens. So we can have fun with that, adding all those extra colors later on. Sepals are going to have some green in it. And I think up here we have a lot of green in the buds, so I'm just going to put a lot of green there. It's a light color, so we can go over it with the darker reds and everything later. Get rid of that original purple outline for the sepals. You don't want that at all. There we go, most of it's gone. Won't be a perfect drawing, well, there it is. Try to get rid of some of that blue. <laughs> you guys can see that blue well, so can I. <laughs> I would be very impressed if you created your piece de resistance during a live stream. Oh, yeah. That right. would be something else. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. That would be exciting. Not the point of it, but there it is. <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to color in some blue. Try to get as much done as I can in a li limited amount of time. So the petals are going to be blue on either side. Well, it's so fun that Karen is there with us today. And thank you again, Marilyn, sticking with me. <laughs> Okay, there we go. And then this, actually these have a lot of blue in them. That's really fun. I need to have some red in them. So I'm just gonna do them all blue. And this is like a cobalt blue here. We'll add a darker blue later, but I just wanna have a base light blue. Sort of blocking in the, the, the light colors right now. The shadow colors will add the dimension to the drawing. Well, we just want to get the, the lights mapped out. And so this one, we can actually see, again, there's not much white in that, but I can add a little white for fun, but really it's, it's actually turned purple down in these old flowers. Don't have any white left in them. The white has turned purple. I, mean, I want to keep my original guidelines. Though. And then this one up here has more white. So I'm going to just leave that white in the standard up here, but the edges are quite blue. And then this is much bigger than I've drawn it, so I'm just going to draw that bigger. So Karen says, wish we could hear him better. Everyone else that's watching, let us know how the sound is, and we can always move the mic a little I, closer. I can move it a little. Okay. <laughs> or or just, we can just cut to the chase. I will just bring it down close to me. Thanks for letting us know, Karen. Thank you, Karen. If that's any better, give us a give us a comment. So there is the last of the standards mapping out the blue. The light blue. Which is sort of a medium blue really. Pretty cobalt blue. And there is the last of the keels. I can add more flowers, but not, not today. Today we have a limit of time, so we're going to keep it as simple as we can. And there is, actually, I can add one um, bud maybe. So what we have here is just to the side of this. Um, very pretty. Uh, add some purple there. Bud. We have another budding flower opening up, which I can just sort of hint at. Um, just to fill this space a little. It's a little empty right there. I don't quite like the shape there. So I'm just going to add a stem coming up here, sepals here, and uh, flower bud opening up.
Okay, so that's the mapped plan for what we're doing. Now, we switch to some of the darks. I'll go back down into the dark blues and purples because if you look at the, the photograph, you'll see the purples and the blue, which are quite pretty, but it's also the shadows are purple in the blue. And so a lot of this area here, the base of this keel is quite purple. So we can put purples in there and use that purple as a shadow. Over here on the right side, I can do some darker blues, like a Prussian blue, which would be very nice. And so you'll have a difference of, of purples on the left and Prussian on the right. It'll give a little more depth and interest. So purples on the left. I'm going to add a little bit of purple over here on the left side of this. And that gives that shadow. Okay, this one here, the shadow is coming in. Like that. This one here, the, the, the entire center of this. Hmm. Did I do that right? Yeah, that's right. It's purple. I don't want to make that too dark because I want to add some red to that to vary it. But it's going to be darkest down in here. That's the bottom left where the shadows of this. If I'm thinking the light's coming from this way. So it's going to be brighter here, darker on this side. So everything's going to be shadowed on the left side. This left half of this keel is going to be purple. And then you'll have some detailing going in like that. Okay. This one here, the whole center here is going to be purple. And then shadow it on this side. And this side of the keel And the tip down here is purple. This one, the back of it, behind the flower is going to be shadowed. Underneath here is going to be shadowed. This whole side here is going to be shadowed. So it's going to be like that. And actually, we can do the same thing with the stem. We can make it shadowed on the underside, shadowed on the left side, That's going to start and then blend it in, blend that in. So you have a hard edge on the outside and a soft edge on the inside so you know what is being shadowed. The stem is blending in, the shadow is blending into the stem, and then the edge of the stem is hard. Pursuit, hairy, soft, hairy stem. So if I had time, I would try to make that a little less hard, give some sense of texture. But I'm not going to concentrate on too many details today. Today, I'm just wanting, I want to get the overall. Can you see how it, any of that detail is showing up at all? A little bit. I can zoom in a bit too. Yeah. So just, you know, so they can see yeah. what the detail is. Yeah. So I've added a little bit of of the hair um, texture to it, but it's not important for this drawing, so I'm not going to concentrate on that. On the back hair, the left side is going to be in shadow, and then the back of the ridge on top of the, the keel is going to be in shadow. Underneath, the, the standard is in shadow, and then this bulge of this central area is going to have a shadow there, right, especially tucked in right there. All of this is catching light on top. Okay, and then, all right, we did this. Now we have to do these. And it's getting less and less purple as we go up. So I'm just keeping to the extreme left side of this keel and this standard. And I'm going to start bringing in the Prussian blue instead of the purple on this flower. So we'll keep this simple. There's the shadow for the calyx. Back. And yeah, I'll put a little bit. Okay, and this bud on the top here 
It's all purple down this side. And there's even a little purple coming up there. And blend that in. So a soft blend, you know that that shadow is on the object itself. Hard is going to be the edge. Okay. And then this is sort of coming, there's a directionality to the shadows here as we go down. This would be the standard um, unfolding on top of the bud. And then inside of it, you'll have the, right here, you'll have the uh, keel. Okay? So that's going like this. All right, now back to the leaves. Let's add some shadowing to the leaves. And the shadowing on the leaves are going to be uh, like a hooker's green, a dark uh, bluish green, a forest green. And it's in the middle. It's a, quite a blue leaf. So I'm just going to add a, a layer of middle toned green to the middle of this thing. And that'll be my base on which I will build shadows to give it more dimension. But I need a base color to fill in the leaf and to get rid of some of these guidelines that I have here, to hide some of these guidelines. So this is my middle tone, overlaying my yellows, which are my uh, base tone. This is probably the most dominant color, and so it's an important color to get filled in. And I'm aiming, targeting the whites that I have left behind with my sloppy drawing before so that I don't have whites to interfere with the shape that I'm trying to block out with the color. I'm just blocking out the middle tone of all of these leaves. The stem is, is more reds and yellow, so I'll keep the stem the way it is for now. And concentrate on the leaves. And I think what I'd like to do too is the edge of the flowers are sort of yellowish, I mean the flowers, the, the leaves. I guess flowers are modified leaves, right? Mm. This color would be good as a drawing color, so I can actually go back over there and darken up my line with this blue-green. Adding a little bit of a hairy texture to each of these leaflets. That gives it more that sense of this species, which is a soft, hairy, small, narrow leaflet. So people who know this plant will recognize it just by that texture alone, you know. The narrow leaf with that soft edge. Now, what am I doing to make it hairy? It's just ticking it, ticking the line. And that suggests uh, individual hairs. And of course, I can be very careful and do it accurately like that. Each little tick, or I can be messy and sketchy. <laughs> Up to you, depending on if you want an illustration or a sketch. Today, I'm just doing a sketch. So there's a hairy leaf, and I hope you can see that because it adds a lot of texture to that sketch. Tina says, looks good. Thanks, see, Tina. You can see that. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Tina. All right, and now I'm going to add a little bit of that shadow green, same color, just darkening it up on the inside here, leaving a light edge between the edge that I just drew and my shadow, which is blending into the mid-tone. And that's suggesting that this edge is lifting up towards us, catching a shadow, and the light is just falling away behind it. Okay, and so on the other side here, I can make this line a little darker so that there's more of a shadow on that side, and that just gives more dimension to the leaf. You're playing with shadows now. This is where the fun begins. We've modeled the shapes, and now we've added a little texture, and now we're actually adding some uh, dimension, bulk, mass, shadow on light. There we have a shadow on this side. So the right side is where the leaf is lifted up like this, and it's catching a shadow from the, the sun on the right. 
Okay, and then of course on this side, a little heavier line to suggest it's catching a shadow there. And again, same thing here. This side's going to be a little darker, not quite as dark as the others. And then this side is going to be a little darker. Okay, so we're starting to get a little more of a. See, this is just sketchy, and that's starting to get some volume. Shadow side on this side, especially towards the tip there. Shadow side on this side. Shadow would be somewhere here, but not too much. It's just sort of pulling on both sides of this leaf, actually, in the photograph. So I'm just going to darken both sides. Even the middle sort of lighter. And then maybe pull a shadow here on the underside. Shadow this side a little bit more. Shadow this side a little more. <coughs> Okay, so we have one leaf, and we'll do the same thing with all of them. And this is where it gets boring. <laughs> so I'll speed it up a little bit. And Monica, you say your connection paused, but it looks like it's good for everyone else. So let us keep us updated with that. Let us know if you can still uh, see the live stream, and everyone else give us your... Um, what you're seeing on your end too. And Monica, if you have any questions, if you miss something and you want me to, to go over something, just let me know, okay? I just went over some shadowing on this leaf. I don't know what you missed, if you missed anything important. And Teresa just says, beautiful and soothing. I can hear all the birds. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, the birds Teresa, are loud right now. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Hi. Is it Teresa or Teresa? Uh, with an H. Oh, Teresa. Karen says, not boring. Love it. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> Karen, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that already. <laughs> All right. Okay. So those are just, again, adding the texture details to the edges. Hint at some shadowing. And I'm just going to do it messily, sketchily, but it'll, it'll get the effect. It'll look like marijuana leaves now. A little bit. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to add some darkened purple to the stem here. Actually, it's quite a red stem. What am I doing? I'm just going to go for color. I'm going to add more of a red purple. That move. Magenta. I can never remember. And then really pop some of these purples up in here because it's quite red purple. Up there, and this is such a pretty color. The whole thing has a bit of a purplish going on, especially on the left side of this bud, we want to darken it up. It's all kind of hairy too, so I'm just going to add some of that suggestion of, of hair suit uh, texture to the edges of these bud bracts. And I'll probably bring some more reds even in, in on that, but here's some dashes to suggest that the, the bud is hairy all over. Such a lovely little flower. It's a, an honor. It's a privilege to, to look at it closely. Uh, you have a chance to draw it. Sophia's asking uh, what park we're at today. We are at Eulestack Natural Area in the city of Santa Clara. Uh, she says, love the drawing. Lupin, correct? Yes, it's miniature lupin. And so right in the middle of this miniature lupin, we have a purple of dark blue spots. So I'm going to go with a really dark blue, if I can find my Prussian blue. 
I'm having some trouble finding it. There it is. And I'm going to add some spots. So the spots are sort of leopardy. Like that. They're very cool. And so you'll see some over here. And I'm going to add that, remember I mentioned that I wanted to add some Prussian blue to the shadows on this side just to give it some variety. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, increase the darkness of the line. And just bring some of that blue shadow and that adds dimension as well as more variety to the beauty of the thing. And maybe add the hair details with this blue as well. Just to make it look like the sepals are hairy over there. I love that little texture that it adds a wolf-like texture to our lupin. <laughs> Lupus lupins. Okay, there we go. Alright, so what's this here? That's the keel of that one. And it's going, the, the keel comes up towards us like this. So I'm just going to enhance that a bit and then goes back over the front of this thing. I'm just using the blue to darken up some of those lines and maybe enhance the shape of this keel so I can read it better. It wasn't, I, I didn't even know what it was. And well, now I can see better what it is. It's actually quite dark right here as it goes under the standard. And I'm adding these darks now, quite dark. And you can see it's adding a lot of depth. And now these are starting to look light. Where we blocked in that, that um, blue with uh, cobalt, Cobalt becomes a light blue because the Prussian blue is acting as a dark shadow of the same color. And it's tying it in with the spots, which is very helpful. I'm going to add some shadow blue here. Just enhance this bud a little bit, make it airy. Enhance the shadow blue hair. I love that. Tina's wondering what brand of colored pencils you're using. So I have a variety. I have all kinds of stuff. Caran d'Ache, Darwin, and um, I have Prismacolor. Okay. <laughs> you know, there, there's so many good brands of, of um, colored pencils, and these are watercolor pencils, some of them, and so they have a lot of pigment in it, and you just try them and see what you like. You know, I, I have no particular preference except I like a lot of pigment, so I go for these watercolor um, pencils. They really have a, a depth to the pigment. And she's also wondering what type of paper you're using. All right, so I'm actually using very high quality paper here because otherwise the paper blows around in the wind. So what I've done is I've used a watercolor um, hot press pad. <laughs> it's actually glued down all around so it can't blow. And I've clipped it to the to the easel, so it can't blow. I also have some Bristol board with me that is meant for, for drawing, drawing quality Bristol board. So that was another option. But having my drawing pad here, I have high quality drawing pad as well, but it would blow around. It's very hard to control. I need three clips to hold it down. This is this is nice and smooth, a good surface for me to work on today. So how are we doing? Good, we have about, I would say, 12 minutes. Okay, so we're getting close to finishing up here as far as, as, as the whole design. So I hope that was helpful and you're gonna be able to then add on, on some of these details. You can get reference on Google. If you want to look up Sky Lupin, get some photographs and, and do a, a drawing or just finish up this one on your own. But I think we're getting quite a nice drawing out of this. All right, what am I doing? <laughs> I want my... Ah, there we go. I'm still doing the Prussian blue shadows and some of these flowers. We've got the blocked in color. We now need to add this um, darker Prussian blue. Add some spots. To the standard. And they're not very many, they're just a few and it really looks good and then add some more depth to the outline. 
So what I've done here is I've created a weighted line. In drawing, you have either a single weight line, which is like a, all the same thickness, all the same darkness, or you have a weighted line, which gets thinner and thicker. And where it gets thicker, it might get darker. And so I'm using the pencil to make it really heavy wherever there's a shadow, heavy blue, like that, and leave it light and purpley on the lit parts, okay? And here we go on this edge here, I'm gonna come like this. Shadow side on the left, create a blue shadow here. Add some more Prussian blue right there to darken out, and then lift along the falls of that petal. And I made a weighted line again, it gets narrower towards the tip, wider at the base, darker at the base, I can add some more darkness there. Like that, okay? And that gives the sense of it folding around. That's contour shading. Okay. And then here we have darkened up the blue underneath. And you've got a little bit of purple in there, so that adds interest. Not all one color. Vary the color, vary the tone, vary the direction, vary the drawing. <coughs> Monica's wondering if there's an easier way to understand the play of light and shadow in drawing and painting. Get a, 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 a set of pure white dishes. <laughs> and you start to see the round bowl shapes, the cups, the handles versus the plate, the planes. Get some that have flat edges that come at, at hexagonal shapes, like a bottle or something. Play with, you know, basic shapes. That's how people, when they go to school, learn to, to draw shadows. You have a very simple version, a banana, an apple, and play with shading that. That's the best way to learn about shadows. Once you've got those sort of core organic shapes, the round shapes, versus the more man-made, hard-edged, um, angular shapes, you're gonna start to be able to draw anything. Those are the core for our arm, our face, a bicycle, anything. Does that help? I, I don't know. If you have another question to Yeah, let us know if that helps, Monica. <laughs> and Karen's wondering if this is the same as Arctic lupin. I believe they're different species, but you know what? I'm not a naturalist, so... I don't know Arctic lupin, Karen. I'm sorry, but the, the miniature lupin is what we have here, and I'm, 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 I would be shocked if they were the same. It's probably a different species, being a completely different habitat. They, the miniature lupins grow here in the hotter, uh, harsher areas. They grow on the side of trails and roads. When I say roads, dirt roads in the parks. And so they, you'll find them on the ridge tops where you have outcrops, rock outcrops. So they can really um, establish themselves. One of the things about lupins is that they are nitrogen fixers. They can grow just as easily once it's not too acidic. The soil is, is, is the wrong kind of soil. They can grow in the harshest places. They can grow on volcanic out, outcrops or any rock outcrop and add nutrients, pull the nutrients. They, they have a relationship with the bacteria and the nodules on their roots allow the bacteria to live and, and bring the nitrogen in. Okay, so, you know, I think I've pretty much covered the, the basics. I'm going to just keep working on it. And I'm going to darken this whole, this whole standard here is in shade. So I'm just going to darken that, block that out, okay? And I'm going to carry these shadows up, 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 following the contours of that. Just around, and then this one here, it's lit on this side, so I'm just going to darken the shadow on this side. And I'm getting some good uh, volume there on those flowers. So I'll go back to the, the bud. I'm going to add some darker purples to that. How are we on time? About five minutes. Five more minutes, great. All right, so I'm going to add some darker purples to the left side of these buds, but it's that same red purple. This is not a particularly good, which is this one? Karen Dash. <laughs> it must be a student grade. Swiss made. <laughs> but I think it's a little hard. It's, the, the pigment isn't coming off as easily as the watercolor. So you'll find that once you start to play around with the pencils, you'll find your favorites. I, I don't have, well, I do. Here's the Darwin version of a similar color. Let's try that. Ooh, it 
comes up. <laughs> it's a little too blue, but it's good. It adds a shadow. It really, the pigment comes off much easier from that pencil. Okay. I guess you just gotta pay for high quality. Get the professional artist grade. And I'm gonna darken up the left side of the whole thing. Darken up that stem a little more. Darken up that. Darken up that. And it's gonna separate, once we start to darken up everything a little, it's gonna to start to separate it from the back ground from the page and this is a point where you you decide if you want to have anything in the background my background is too messy so I'm gonna need to do something so, to hide those blue lines mm. I can add a little blue sky that's gonna blend with the blue yesterday I did a yellow background as if it looking down on it and you had uh, more of the yellow grasses behind or something. And that sets off the blue much better than blue. But I'm using a different blue, a sky blue. What is this? Karen Dash. It doesn't say what the type of blue is, but it's a very um, light blue, pale blue. What I would have called duck egg blue. It's almost like a, it's got a little greenish quality to it. But what I'm trying to do with this is, and I'm going to target those whites again. By adding a background, it's going to allow me to make those whites that I'm leaving on the flower here pop. Not just hide my drawing guidelines, but I can actually make my lights pop out of the, the petals. So think about it, if you wanna add, just be brave. If you mess up, so what? Start again. See some of these artists doing 10, 15 different versions of the same thing. And by doing that, you, you create a lot of work, but you also um, learn from the process. And you become much more brave at trying new things. So it's really worthwhile. And then when I get down here, I have this more yellow um, line that I want to cover up. So I will probably switch at that point to doing something more earth tony and then layer yellow on top of that and that will set the leaf off I can blend these two together but I want to hide the, 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 the reason for doing this background is to hide those guidelines that I can't erase And it's gonna take a little work. We don't have time to do that all right now. And I can make that blue more yellow, targeting those whites. This is gonna set off those flowers really nicely, frame them.